Good morning. My name is Sherrod Eddington, and it is my honor to be pastor of First Presbyterian Church. And on behalf of the congregation and the session and deacons of this church, I wish to welcome all of you today for this service of witness to the resurrection for our dear friend, George Gephardt. I invite you now to stand for our call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we acknowledge the uncertainty of our life on this earth. We are given a mere handful of days, and our span of life seems nothing in your sight. All flesh is as grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. But your word, O Lord, will stand forever. And in this, we find our hope. For you are our God. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, you are with us. O Lord, let us know our end. Let us know the number of our days, that we may learn just how fleeting this life is. And turn your ear to our cry and hear our prayer. Do not be silent at our tears, for we live as strangers before you, wandering pilgrims as all our ancestors were. But you, you, O Lord, are the same, and your years shall have no end. Amen. Let us now. Open our hearts to God and ask that God cleanse our hearts, that God redeem our memories, and that God renew our confidence in God's goodness. I invite you to join with me in the confession of sins. Let us pray. Holy God, you see us as we are and know our inmost thoughts. We confess that we are unworthy of your gracious care. We forget that all life comes from you 
and that to you all life returns. Apart from you, we are nothing. Only your grace can sustain us. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us, heal us, and make us whole. Set us free from our sin and restore to us the joy of your salvation, now and forever. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, and so I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And so may the God of mercy, who forgives you all your sins, who strengthens you in all goodness, and who by the power of the Holy Spirit keeps you in eternal life. Amen. We have two readings this day. The first is from Paul's letter to Corinth, chapter 13. Paul writes, If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. But we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. Our second reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. He said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? And the lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. This is the word of the Lord.
I'm sure you all remember that old slogan from State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. It's a catchy little ditty that's been bouncing around in my head all this week as I've been thinking about George Gephardt because I've decided that if there is a word to describe him, it would be neighbor, both practically and theologically. Some of you were neighbors to George and Nancy. I understand that they were just the third family to move into Five Oaks. George wanted that view of the golf course, even though he didn't play golf. But he and Nancy built a beautiful life and home there with a lovely view of the lake. I enjoyed sitting in their sunroom just looking out over the lake. Sometimes it was frozen, sometimes it wasn't. They were generous always in opening their home and hospitality. And theologically, George was a good neighbor in that he embodied those words that we read in Luke's gospel when the scribe asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responded by asking this man, what's it say in scripture? What do you find there? And the man answered, you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul with all your strength and all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And that was George. He loved his God. He loved his neighbors, and not just the neighbors there in Five Oaks, but everyone that he encountered. And you knew this through his endless kindness and his generosity. Some of you may be here today simply because of a kindness that George extended to you at some point in time. George Gephardt was born in Nashville. He graduated from Donaldson High School, where he was the drum major. George was musical. He played several instruments. He graduated from Tennessee Tech. He paid for college himself by working at the Ford Glass Plant. And none of us should be surprised at that because we all know that George was a worker. After college, he took a job in insurance, but that wasn't really for him. And so he moved over into banking. And he spent a number of years working in a bank. And then after having learned a great deal about finance, he started his next career as a businessman and an entrepreneur. And he owned a number of businesses around here, including a company that manufactured concrete blocks. But most of you know him for owning and running the restaurants around town, especially the three Mrs. Winters restaurants. Along the way, George and Nancy were married. They had been introduced by mutual friends. They moved to Lebanon and joined this church on January the 4th, 1970, 50 four years ago. And in that time, they both served the church with great distinction, both as officers serving, I'm sure, on every committee imaginable. They, uh, George even played bass in our early service praise band, and the other members of the band are here today. It's good to see them. And of course, uh, when was, whenever was needed, he brought pizza. <laughs> and as I understand it, eventually George got to that time in his life when he thought about slowing down a bit, and so he sold the other businesses and went and bought the key stop in Gordonsville. I don't know about you, but that's not my idea of slowing down, but that was George, a tireless worker. But it wasn't just the work, I don't believe. George just wasn't somebody to work. He was a neighbor. And through the restaurants and through the businesses, even the gas station, George was helping people. He was feeding people. His life fulfilled those words. Love your neighbors as yourself. Just as a side note, I learned this this week, at the key stop in Gordonsville, George had that contract for Hunt Brothers Pizza, and they sold a lot of pizza in Gordonsville. In fact, they sold more pizzas out of that one location than the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. 
Carly told me that on Friday nights they just couldn't cook the pizzas fast enough. But that was a way of being a neighbor, of serving people. And here at the church, as I mentioned, we benefited from those pizzas as well. Anytime pizzas were needed, we only had to give George a call and they would appear. We were a little spoiled by that. George Gephardt was truly a wonderful person. Getting to know George was easy. Learning to spell Gephardt, that's a bit different. And this week, I've been talking to people all around this church about George. And to be perfectly honest, that when the news of his death broke last Sunday, I believe I witnessed more tears than any other time before. All week, people have been coming to me and talking about George and his qualities, his kindness, his humility, his generosity. One person in the Sunday school class that he taught said that George never said anything cross or negative about anyone. And this person admitted that they even tried to get him to. <laughs> and he wouldn't. George never complained. And with all of his illnesses, he had every right to, really. But he was always pleasant and cheerful. And if you didn't know him, you wouldn't know how sick he really was. That was just him. Our first reading today was Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. And you may have recognized that because you've all been to a wedding or 12. That is the, 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 the love passage, we call it. And it's typically read at weddings. But the truth is, it's not really a wedding passage. It's not about romantic love. It's about agape love, which is a different sort of love. What Paul is writing there is about the qualities that a Christian should embody who is in relationship with God. And as I read over those, you see George in every sentence. Let me just take the middle passage from that chapter and put George's name in there. And you'll see what I mean. Instead of saying love is patient, George is patient. George is kind. George is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. George doesn't insist on his own way. He's not irritable or resentful. He does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. George bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's not to put him up on a pedestal because he would haunt me forever if I did that. But it is a reminder of the life that we all are called to lead. A life that embodies these things and it is so rare to find someone who does it so well. In our church, he's going to get mad at me, but we call these saints. These are sa saints are the people who embody the love of Jesus Christ in their lives and act it out every day and every moment. We're going to miss our dear friend George. But we are all better people for having known him. I know that I am. I think of something, I say, well, what would George do in this case? How would he respond? Well, not with drama, not with anger, not with resentment, not with any of these things but with love, and we are blessed to have known him. Amen. As our affirmation of faith this day, I ask you to turn to the back page of your bulletin, and there we'll find the words, the timeless words of Psalm 23. And I invite you, let us read these together. Let us read. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Let us once again offer ourselves to our God in prayer. Almighty God, before whom the generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. But especially, dear God, we thank you for your servant, George Gephardt, whose baptism is now complete in death. And we praise you for the gift of his life, for all in him that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace that you gave him, a grace that enkindled in him the love of your dear name and enabled him to serve you so faithfully. We thank you, Lord, that for now, death is past, pain is ended, and that George has entered into the joy that you have prepared, a joy found in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And let us now, all with the confidence of the children of God, continue praying, using those words that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let us stand, please.
You are immortal, the creator and maker of God. We are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth we shall return. This you ordained when you created us, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with all your saints, where there is neither pain nor sorrow nor sighing, but life everlasting. And into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, George Gephardt. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, into the glorious company of the saints in life. May the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do God's will working among us that which is pleasing in God's sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen. We are dismissed. Amen.